Neat games! Hi, I'm Nick. I'm a full-time English teacher here in Korea, and I make games as a hobby. This is my new Metroidvania game called Yester Soul. I have been working on it for almost two months now, and it's coming along really well. It has a simple spear mechanic where you can throw and recall it. Also, it can be a platform to help you reach places you normally could not. There will be a beautiful open world to explore with 12 plus environments. You'll fight various enemies. And hopefully, nine-ish cool bosses. This is Corin, the reluctant hero of this story. In the last video I asked, Goggles, yay or nay? And yay it is, so the goggles will stay. Something I've been thinking a lot about is designing the world of Yestersoul. This is extremely important because a Metroidvania is a genre of action-adventure video games focused on guided non-linearity and utility-gated exploration and progression. So, a good map is good. This is why I need to plan out the critical paths and what are their restrictions that are determined by the player's current skill set. I hope that planning them really well in the early stages will prevent me from having to redo levels and zones a lot more later on. To start this prototype, I joined a 30-day Metroidvania game jam. And in this game jam, it was designed as a short experience with everything close together so the contestants could play the game and finish it fairly easy. I think I was successful at making the prototype in just 30 days because I planned out the critical path and what areas were unlocked very early on. And now that I'm turning it into a much larger game, I had to redo it all with the new layout. My current goal is to try and have three to five hours of average blind playthrough time. So I had to brainstorm up several other areas. And to make each area feel distinct, I have given them different color palettes. The player and enemy color theme are the complementary colors of yellow and purple and these will stay consistent throughout the game. Another thing I focused on is I tried to make this area feel organic, not just different color areas slapped next to each other. For example, here is a redwood forest. There's a large river and it rains here often. All this water has seeped underground and created a large underground lake. This water is piped through the steamworks down through the industrial area and into the power core, providing water for steam and also cooling it down. Then the excess steam is pumped up through the industrial area, through the orange crystal caves, and out the steam stacks on the eastern desert. So I think this gives it kind of a organic feeling where the world feels connected together naturally and logically. The last thing I thought about before I started grinding out the new zones is the progression. Where does the player have access to with their current skills and actual keys for gates? I don't want the game to feel too linear, and I want the player to enjoy exploring the zones. But also I don't want the player to feel too lost or frustrated. I think this is one of the more difficult fine lines to walk in this genre. Also, I realized the world is getting quite big, and I had to stay organized and future-proof. So I renamed all the scenes and areas, and I had to adjust all the current doors. I put them all into a spreadsheet, and now it'll be much easier to know what scene I am working on and how it connects to others. I'm not sure if this is the best approach, but I do all the rooms as individual scenes. When I work on them, I have two or three scenes open at once, and this helps me do the positioning and the door placement. As long as you have all the tile maps appropriately named, 
it's not too hard working with multiple scenes open. Please let me know what you think about the world design because I will get to work on building out the world now. And hopefully with this early plan set, I won't have to remake whole zones or have odd progression. However, it's impossible to plan it perfectly, so I still anticipate that there will be a lot of adjusting to do in the future. As for the other stuff I have worked on since the last video, I think I've gotten a lot accomplished. Let's go through them all real quick. In October, I joined Devtober, and the goal of this game jam is to post a little bit of game progress every day. Try to have no 0% days. Sometimes you can just brainstorm at work, or sometimes you can work on the game a lot in Unity. It doesn't really matter as long as you do something every day. So here's what I worked on. Here is a animated Corin on the main menu. I did some animation work. Here is a simple dash animation, a player hurt animation, and some enemy hurt animations. There are various new decorations throughout. I did a decor tile map layer on the foreground parallax. I think it gives a really cool sense of depth to the game. Also, there are now bushes on the foreground parallax. I added vine tile map with hanging vines that react to the player and also little animated leaves. There are also giant mushrooms in the mushroom cave. They also react to the player. And I added some steam lamps closer to the city. Also this building tile map, just to make simple structures on the city zone. And also, there are key gates now. If the player has the correct key, they can open up the gate and move on to the new zone. For my playtesting purposes, I finally made a give all skills cheat button. The world is getting so big and I have to start from various points of the game to test, so this has made it much easier than manually turning on all the skills. I also started work on some new areas like the ancient city and some new hazards like these cool pop-up spikes. And to make the mini-map look less like pixel art, I made some triangle tiles to smooth out the mini-map. I'm having a lot of fun making this game, and it feels less daunting than my previous projects. It is very satisfying setting small achievable goals, and then accomplishing them and getting to check them off my little to-do list. Thanks again to everyone who gave feedback and comments on my previous video and the previous build of the game. And for this video's final question, do you have any extra zone ideas? I might add more underground areas to explore. Especially if I get in a good workflow when I complete the zones fairly quickly. Okay. See you in the next video, and before this ends, here is the current lore if you're interested. This is Yestersoul. You are Corin, a young Soladin, a sun warrior, but you are only a trainee. You wield a magical sun spear that you can throw, recall, and use as a platform. Your small desert village has been destroyed by the monstrous mosquito minions of an old evil deity that was once trapped in the moon. You have decided to discover where they came from and to stop this from ever happening again. You make your way into a cursed land that you have only ever read about in books. There is an ancient underground city that is still powered by an ancient heat seat that produces steam. Here, the once great Sol Luna Kingdom reigned, but over time there was a split in beliefs that caused an all-out civil war. Corin must traverse these lands and fight his way to a solution. This is the current lore of the game. What do you think? And thanks for watching the video. See you in the next one. Bye bye.